In this episode, I spoke with Morgan Ingram, the founder and CEO of AMP, which is a strategic B2B GTM production company. They help connect subject matter experts with companies to help them grow their business. Morgan is a four-time LinkedIn top sales voice. And today we talked about personal branding, company branding, storytelling, modern sales, and a lot more. So let's dive right into this episode. Well, uh, we would love to give the audience a chance to, to get to know you before we dive into what you're best at. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just kind of tackling the few bullet points of your career summed up, what's led you to this point and then what you're focusing on right now? Oh, uh, yeah. So I started off as an SDR, uh, cold calling, cold emailing, all the fun, all the fun you can have when you're doing that. And so once I did the, the cold emailing, the cold calling, all the, the pain that goes through that to converting opportunities, uh, I started a YouTube channel called the SR Chronicles right when I was at SDR. So I documented my journey, shared best practices, things of that nature. And then that's what things really took off for me. Became a manager of SDRs, got founded by John Barrows and did sales training for three, four years, trained all the high growth tech companies, Snowflake, Zoom, et cetera. And as I was doing all that, I was still creating content and I learned a lot from creating content. And I've now seen a shift in the market where people are trying to figure out how do we use our people internally and externally to create content that generates that pipeline. And so now we shifted more towards creating content to help generate pipeline and helping others along the way do it. So that's our new thing that we're focused on now, what I'm focused on. On the marketing side, as you were in sales and like coaching other sellers, how did marketing play into that now, uh, then? And how is that different from what you focus on in terms of marketing now? Marketing then as in like what I personally was doing or just like, how do I see it myself? Yeah, just like, yeah, how, how was marketing playing into what you were actually doing and versus like what you're focusing on now? Yeah, I would say, I would say marketing was the traditional pieces that you would see, right? Just the normal white paper, et cetera. And those, still, those things still happen. I would say that the main difference today is that you just have more people that are individual brands being integrated inside of these organizations and partnering with these brands to create more authentic, incredible content. So I would say that's probably the biggest shift that I see. Not to say that that wasn't happening back when I was working with marketing as an SDR manager, leader, rep, but I just see more and more that now where people are creating content and taking that next step. So I, I want to talk branding today. I also, I want to talk, you know, B2B um, kind of like content and, and get building a brand and using ex subject matter experts to grow. I want to talk about all that stuff, but let's start off with your foundations first and then build to the B2B side. When you were starting your own personal brand, did you have like any initial fears of that or any questions of like, this is, I don't know if I should do this. What, what did you think was going to be difficult about it? And how did you overcome all that? I think the biggest thing that I felt uncomfortable by was putting your voice out there and you don't know who's going to see it, right? You have no idea who is going to see the content. You can get a lot of feedback and critiques from it to be like, oh, oh, well, here he goes again. What is he, what is he talking about? So I always felt like that for sure. I got over that, not pretty quickly, but I got over it within like six months because I realized that if I can just impact one person from each post, then I've done my job. So if you have that as a focus, it allows you to just say what you need to say and do what you need to do without it being something crazy or being a hindrance. So I've actually found that to be really helpful across the board and potentially allow you to reach out to the people that you need to with your content. So I would say in the beginning, yeah, it's hard because you're reaching out to people or you're making content and no one really knows who you are. But if you put out your true self there, people will resonate with it and want to talk to you. When you look back at, at that time when you first started, what do you think? What did you do differently then compared to how you would do it now, just in terms of branding? That's a good question. How would I do it differently? Mm, I think I would have done more collaborations that were more consistent. I think, I think it was like when I started out, I did a lot of series. I did a lot of th like themed posts. So I think I did a great job there. I did collaborate with people, but it wasn't consistent. If we do like one thing and that was it, I would have just hunkered down on momentum more. And even now I would have focused more on own audience earlier. I think it's now become a focus, but earlier on, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just like, just wanted to create good content. So that was it. I just wanted to get engagement. That was my focus. So 
Uh, I think, I think the thing I would have done is have more collaborations that would have been strategic and, and, and done it that way. Walk me through in greater depth, kind of what you're building now, uh, specifically what, what was like the problem that sparked a lot of what you're helping people with now that you're trying to solve? Yeah. So a lot of people that I spoke to their, their main problem is we're doing outbound, we're doing all these different things and we're not able to get in front of our buyers. People are ignoring us. They're not responding, et cetera. So since I saw that as an obstacle, it's like, well, I can continuously elevate the prospecting piece. Or there is another lane, which is creating the content. And now we're in a realm where buyers want to connect with other people who use the product or people that are influential. And so I said, okay, well, if you connect the content creator, which is like, we like to call it the subject matter expert, that is a, a leader, that is a customer, et cetera, that then allows us to get in front of the people that we want to get in front of, right? And so that ultimately at the end of the day, then allows us to get in front of the right people at the right time. So when they are ready to buy, they can go from there. So the problem at the end of the day is really that is pipeline and you need another place to get pipeline. Well, that's through the people that create content because that creates more awareness, that creates demand jet, which is then a content impact problem because the content that you're creating is not impacting the way you want it to. Yeah. So walk, walk me through that a little bit more for you know, building a narrative around subject matter experts, building, you know, using them to kind of tell a company's story, grow your company. Let's, let's take the average company that comes to, to work with you. What does the, what does it kind of look like? What do they end up doing? What, what does their strategy end up becoming most of the time after working with you? Yeah. So when we look at the strategy from an SME or a content creation standpoint, uh, the first and foremost thing is who do we, who we're going to identify and who we're going to activate, right? So the thing is, if you want to get awareness and you want to drive people, you have to get, people have to know who you are and they want to know from, they want credible content. So we're, we'll talk to like a, let's say it's a CMO. Let's say if it's the CFO, where your buyers are, we're going to identify the people that are subject matter experts internally. We then take those subject matter experts and then put them into channels like webinars, podcasts, all these things across the board so they can actually get in front of the right people. And then once we implement that, they'll run that system continuously from there. So again, we look at the three tiers, leaders, customers, external SMEs. We take those three and then we're like, cool, like how do we then get in front of the right people? And then we use those channels to get in front of them. So that's like a normal use case that we would have there. I, th I think one thing that a lot of B2B companies do struggle just on that first part of internally, do we even know our own story and our own value that we could communicate with our own internal stakeholders first? And then when you start adding in these external SMEs, I'm curious how you think about, well, first off, just making sure that you're aligned on that, you know, that first step, but also beyond that, when you start working with other influencers or subject matter experts, how do you make sure that the brand story comes through with somebody that's not actually embedded inside the brand? Yeah. So the, that's right. And then the, the, we call it the three C's and then we talk about how embedded. So the three C's that we have is credibility charisma and character. So first and foremost, we got to make sure that the character is right. Because if you have a brand story, you need to make sure that the person's character is on point. So simply back checking what's going on, what's happening, et cetera. Like, okay, like how are they in market? Right. You want to make sure that people actually like, like the person, right. Then the next thing is the credibility. Are they speaking off of experience? So when people see the content, they're like, yep, that person's actually done it. We want to hear more from them. And then charisma, which is, are they captivating and bringing an audience? So that could be from video, that could be from written. There's a lot of different components of that. That's what's going to lead to that success overall. So if you have those three things, you're, you're in a fantastic spot. And then how do you make sure you, how does it integrate the brand story? That's where you integrate and work with the company. So there's going to be someone in marketing that you work with, someone in sales that you work with, and really just making sure that you understand their core values. Do they align with yours? And then you go from there. How does, how does the average company stack up when they, when they come to you? Like what stuff do they usually have? What do they usually not have? How far away are they from actually implementing something like this? Oh, uh, I would say, I would say most companies have components, um, but as a cohesive unit, uh, it's going to take some time and it's not they're far away because like they're far away. Oh, they don't know anything. I think it's just, you don't know what you don't know, right? A lot of these things are newer to companies. So. 
So it's like, do we have the right resources? Do we have the right hard right people? Probably not. And so that's why we see people who have in-house designers or in-house production teams, or most people don't have those theme teams. And we could come in and play that that factor if we need to, and we can and we can do that. And I and I find that a lot of people, again, they have components, not the full thing. And then we try to put those pieces together so you can move in the right direction. A, a common thread here that's kind of like just top of mind for me for whatever reason is, is storytelling. I think it weaves through a lot of what you're doing here and just would would like to know kind of how you think about if you go into a company and you're trying to help them and they really don't know their story or how to tell it, it's pretty boring across all their marketing materials or whatever. Yeah. How do you think about taking that from zero to one? On the content strategy side? Yeah, or, or even just like helping them actually narrow in on their narrative, their story, their messaging. I think I think one of the best things that you can do, and this is something that we currently did and are, are still doing to get to the point where we really nailed what, what we're, we're talking about, is going to your customers and having roundtables. So once a week, let's say you're, let's say you're going after CFOs. So once a week, get three, four CFOs and say, hey, this is what we believe to be true. Here's where we're going. Does this align with you? Right? Does this align with you? And then you can get real-time feedback to figure out, like, no, that narrative makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I find that we can sit in a room and try to figure it out ourselves. But what you're going to be able to do the best at the end of the day and what you can do to, like, really maximize your time is talk to your customers about what you're building and then go from there. And then now people can appreciate that. They understand where you're going and you have better conversations. So that would be my recommendation. How, how do you think about the most common paths to revenue from, from this strategy? So if you're using the influencer framework, the subject matter experts, how do, how do you sell companies on, well, this is, this, these are the different ways that revenue could come through that. The one that, uh, I always like to point to is, is podcasts, right? Like getting your target customers or target accounts and getting them on a podcast, great way to do that. Your SDR and AA team might be reaching out to the account, but they may not be answering. We can get them on a podcast, right? And that's going to allow for them to have like kind of a pseudo discovery. So that's, that's that. Another thing is webinars or shows. You create a great concept of a webinar or show. That's great because what that's going to do is it's going to bring people in. And because it's going to bring people in, right, now you can use that as groundswell to get into accounts. So if you got a lot of people that registered, great. There's a lot of accounts we can get into. You can get feedback. You can go from there. You can have conversations, right? So that's the piece there as well. And another access point is using, and again, influencers can be widespread, but using customers in the content. So if customers are in the content, again, buyers want to talk to buyers. So if the customers are in the content, that's another way to drive them in as well. Whether they're customer workshops, spotlights, et cetera, that's another way to go about it. Is there an example of like maybe a favorite brand you've worked with or favorite project you've done with somebody where you could just kind of walk through what you actually set up and what, what you ended up doing? Yeah, so this, this example is simple, yet it's impactful because it, it led to a lot of registrants and results for us. So Cognizant is my favorite brand that we work with. We've worked with them for like 18, 19 months. There's a lot of things we're doing on the SME side. And one thing that we really dove into to get results was cold calling lives. And our cold calling lives were virtual where we do mock cold calls. A rep would come on, they do a mock cold call. They call one of the people on the panel that would be a customer. And it was an, inter it's an interactive webinar. People are excited about it. And people got a lot of little uh, results and advice out of it. So think about that. That is a really good use case to bring new people in that want to learn. And we find that a lot of AEs and SDRs will join, but they're in big accounts. So it allows us to get access to these accounts for groundswell because like, oh, that was, that was great. And right now we can have a better conversation with them moving forward. So that's probably one of the more, like let's say, impactful things that I've done. There's some other things that we've done across the board that I can mention, but if I mentioned impactful, it's what we ran a series every month, same one. And because we got momentum, it really built a community around it and people got excited. I love it. Well, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about sales yeah. at least a little bit here. So let, yeah. let's talk sales real brief. Um, I'm not sure how much you're, I'm sure you know you're selling your own service, but 
beyond that, I'm not sure if it's quite apples to apples what you were doing before versus now, but just curious your thoughts on sales in 2024 now that guys come through. There's been a, a lot of stuff that's happened in the past couple of years. It's changed a lot in sales and marketing. Where, where do you stand on what you see as big trends, big, big, exciting things coming in sales? Big, exciting things. Sales is hard right now. It's, it's hard. Oh, a lot of people are not excited about a lot of things. Um, sales is difficult. I would say that I've seen the the concept of nearbound. I've seen I've seen a lot of content on that. Right, using your partner system. I think a lot more people will integrate into that. I like the work that they're doing over there. I think referrals will continuously pick up. I think more people will do many community events to sell and get relations, etc. I think the ways of only doing pure uh, there's outbound is always going to be there, but only doing outbound is like that's changing. I think we're in a world now where it's like we're going to have nearbound and that's a selling motion you have the influencers that's going to be selling a help a helpful go to market motion you got you know you got uh referrals going on right you have like like collaborative prospecting with SCRs and EEs. there's a lot that's going on so i think you're going to see more of that and that's going to lead to a lot of results for people and, and on the ai front really quick i'm just curious how you're using it if at all in in what you're building now in your workflows yeah, so we use Copy AI. It's been great. And so essentially we take all of our sales calls and internal calls, right? And then once we do that, then we can create more content. So every I believe every call that you're on is content because you're talking about something, you're discussing, et cetera. So you can you can let it go from there. And then once you're able to do that, then the next stage, right? Once you can suss all that out, is sales questions. So every call that I'm on, it can assess what question works, what didn't work, et cetera, and we can move from there. So I, I'm a huge, huge fan of doing this step-by-step, step, right? Take your call, break it down. It gives you content for the week. You don't even have to create new content. The content you're, you're already saying is on sales calls and, 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 and content calls as well. And then take that content and then say, what questions can we ask our prospects to get better answers? That's probably the best way of using AI. I'm also using it to analyze the tone and th uh, pieces of my of my content so I can understand what's going on. But those are things that I'm doing right now. So it's safe to say you're you're probably using AI more in embedded tools that you're already using as opposed to actively seeking out like chat GPT and feeding everything in there. Yeah, I would say now, I mean, Copy AI just does a great job with workflows. So all the prompts that I would create, it automatically is inside the workflows. So it makes it easier for me to just do the things I need to do from there. Totally, totally. Uh, final question here, and then, and then I want to give you a chance to, you know, kind of conclude us. But um, if you're looking at maybe the top two or three marketing tools that if I took them away would be the most devastating to your business, what would those tools be? Marketing tools? Oh, man. What would be the most devastating? Trying to decipher between all the tools I have. A lot of them are sales tools. Um, Those count too. I'll accept uh, it. Because <laughs> I would say since Spark is a video tool, I use that every single day. So if I didn't have that, that would be heavily problematic for sure. I think at this point, because of all the information it can give me, copy AI for sure. I would say I, I not having that would be like, that would be like the worst. And I'd probably say a data tool like, Cognizant would, would suck. I'd probably add in their calendar too, because like without the meeting schedule, I'd have to go back and forth with everyone and that'd be annoying. So I'd probably say those four, like if I didn't have those, it'd be like, it'd be really bad uh, because they allow me to do a lot of stuff that I do at a consistent pace. Solid. Well, well let's let's give the audience a chance to kind of figure out where where to find you. So where's the best place to contact you and, and what are you working on now? Yeah, best place to contact me is Morgan J. Ingram across all social platforms. So go hit me up there. And then what I'm working on right now is like what we've been talking about is how to identify and activate B2B influencers and subject matter experts for B2B organizations and allow that and that to be pipeline generating content. So that that's our main focus right now. 